All right, so what's the difference between using a freeze dryer and a dehydrator? Now, both the dehydrator and freeze dryer have the same goal, which is to remove moisture from food. Removing the water from the food allows it to be preserved for a lot longer without it going off. This is because water helps facilitate the growth of things that contribute to foodborne illness. And by removing the water, it makes it harder for bacteria and mold and other stuff to live. And therefore, this food stays fresher longer. Drying food as a form of preservation is pretty much as old as we are. But around the 1930s, the process of freeze drying food was developed. Although it essentially just removes water as well, how it does it is completely different, which means that the end result is completely different. So today I want to show how these differ by making some cheese powder, which I think really illustrates very well how these two different methods for removing water differ from each other. Making cheese powder is something not entirely new for this channel. A few months ago I made some instant mac and cheese and some Doritos using a dehydrator. We're going to compare that to the freeze dryer. Now this video is going to be a little bit more sciencey, and next week I will get back to the Flavor Lab wacky shenanigans. Okay so to actually illustrate the difference let's just make some cheese powder. Now to do this, I'm going to be using a big old bag of pre-shredded cheese. So the cheese I'm going to be using is a mild American style cheddar cheese. Now let's just start with the dehydrator. For this, I want some airflow around the cheese. So I'm going to be using this tray and I'm just going to lay out an even layer of the shredded cheese and just put it into the dehydrator overnight. Now for the freeze dryer, I'm going to be placing the cheese into the harvest right trays and I'm going to place the trays into the harvest right, turn it on and just let it go. Couldn't be simpler. Now both the freeze dryer and the dehydrator take about a day to dry out the cheese. But as I keep saying, the results couldn't be more different. Pulling the freeze-dried cheese out of the harvester, right, we can see that the cheese is a little paler than it was beforehand. Uh, it's really crunchy and it's very dry to the touch. It's almost like reminiscent of like a puffed rice or something. Now let's look at the cheese that was from the dehydrator. And we can see that this cheese here is very shiny, it's very hard, and it's very oily to the touch. In fact, it's super greasy. Now biting into some of these pieces is a little difficult because they became very, very hard. And in the past, uh, where I've made cheese powder for those other recipes, what I had to do was actually grind this up and try to mop up all the oil using a paper towel. I put it back into the dehydrator and then let it go for another day. And that worked out for what I was trying to do. But what is going on here? Why is there a difference? Well, to understand the difference between the two, let's talk about how dehydrators work as well as what even is cheese. So to understand the cheese part, let's start with milk. Well, milk is a stable emulsion of fat, protein, sugar, and water. And to make cheese, Rene or some other acidification agent is added to the milk, which separates most of the water in the form of whey from the curds, which are clumps of mostly protein and fat. Now, as we know, fats or oils don't really get along with water. And this is where the protein known as casein, which is present in the milk, really comes into play. It has two ends, and due to its molecular structure, one side likes to be next to water, and one side hates being next to water. When making cheese, these proteins surround the fat in the milk to form what's known as a micelle, or a fat globule, where the fat is kind of encapsulated with all of these proteins, and it's kind of protected in the center from the water surrounding it. And here's what it looks like under an electron microscope. Now these globules actually stick together and form the curds in the cheese uh, in what's known as a protein matrix. That's just you know, all these globules stuck together. Okay, now with that in mind, let's talk about the dehydrators. Well, food drying is literally just the process of removing the water through evaporation from the food you're actually interested in drying. Now this is done and has been done uh, using the sun, um, using smoke, or even just dry air. And believe it or not, this benchtop contraption pretty much used the exact same method that humans have always used. Now the main idea here is that you want to create really dry air and moisture from whatever you're trying to dry just evaporates from the food. Now going from liquid water to a water vapor requires a lot of energy. So in this thing, this is done by using somewhat hotter air to help dry out the food. This dehydrator uses a fan to blow air that's approximately 90 degrees Fahrenheit or about 32 degrees Celsius over the food. And this works really well for drying out certain types of food. However, when putting something like cheese in here, a lot of different stuff starts to happen. When we place the cheese into the air dryer, as the temperature of the cheese rises, the protein matrix, which kind of, you know, holds the curds together, becomes unstable and starts to melt. Also, the milk fat, which had a consistency of like hard butter, begins to liquefy. And now before the structure completely liquefies though, the unstable matrix causes the oil that's been trapped inside the micelle to be released and it starts to get pressed to the surface. And this creates an oily slick mess. The stuff that's left over is really just that dense protein structure. And this process is more or less irreversible. Once the oil leaks out, there's no putting the horse back in the barn. In the words of Kenji Lopez Alt when describing how to make his super delicious mac and cheese recipe in his wonderful book, The Food Lab, what was once whole and well is now completely separated into fat, protein, and water. And unless you've got a $5,000 homogenizer on hand, it ain't coming back together. So as I said before, this hard cheese powder we ended up with is totally okay, and you can still use it to make recipes as I've done in the past. But let's compare it to what happens in the freeze dryer. Well, the freeze dryer works a little differently. Instead of just simply heating the cheese up to make liquid water evaporate, it freezes the cheese first. 
and then it reduces the pressure inside of the freeze dryer while staying super cold. As the pressure drops, so does the temperature at which water boils. Think about how water boils at higher elevations at temperatures below 100 C or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. For example, in Denver, water boils at 202 degrees Fahrenheit or about 94 degrees Celsius. However, the pressure that we reach in this chamber is about a thousand times lower than what you would find at the peak of Mount Everest. When the pressure gets this low, the boiling point of water goes from 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit all the way down to room temperature. However, the melting point of the protein matrix and the fat within the cheese stays constant. This means that the water can escape the cheese without melting the fat. And this basically leaves this protein structure completely intact just without the water. Now, once all the water has boiled off at room temperature, it's just a matter of bringing this back to atmospheric pressure and bingo boingo, we have the cheese you see. And this is why the two cheeses are completely different. But let's actually test this out to see how they differ when actually trying to cook something. Just to show what's going on, I'm gonna grind up both of these in the food processor, and I just put some of the air-dried cheese in there, and it really kind of stuck together and was very difficult to, to grind up. The, the dense and hard protein structure is really kind of difficult to break up without that fat kind of helping insulate things. Additionally, the oil really causes the clumps to stick together, so it was a little bit more difficult. You can grind it up like I did using a mortar and pestle in, in previous videos. However, let's just compare this by to the freeze-dried cheese. I placed this into the food processor and it just ground up beautifully. And I was able to just quickly make some popcorn and coat the popcorn pretty easily using this. Now, I have to keep reiterating that both methods will work, but sometimes you might want one or the other. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing. I have some intentions with this cheese, and for those who have been following what's going on on the community page, you may have an idea of what next week's video will be. All right, well, thank you for watching, and bye.